To Doris, on your birthday, many happy returns, Mr. and Mrs. Sutton. <laughs> Sweet girl, felicitations on your 13th birthday, the Pembroke family. Happy birthday, Dee Dee. Hope you enjoy breaking these in to dance to one of your favorite songs in. See you in class, Mrs. C. <laughs> Our condolences on your recent loss and most sincere wishes for a joyful birthday, Mrs. G.D. Cabot. 
Dean of Admissions, Brawley School for Girls. Miss Doris, may this year bring you many new adventures on the horizon. Happy birthday from your friends at Pan Atlantic Airways. Miss Duke, on this day, no jewel shines brighter than you. You are priceless. Best wishes, the United States National Treasury. Ooh. All right. I am writing you now in the few moments of peace I get from these nurses and doctors and on a scrap of paper I was able to procure from one of their clipboards. All I've seen in the past two days are faces peering over those blasted clipboards and their strained expressions of concern. I reckon one of those wretched faces may may be the last one I see. So I will make this brief. If I am not here in the coming weeks, let me wish you a happy birthday. All of the paperwork, the documents, my will and my estate, all of it I have taken care of. And you will be fine. You will want for nothing, at least not in that respect. But heed my words now, for you will learn soon enough, and with a sharp, swift kick that'll take your legs out from under you if you are not prepared. People will not see you as a person. They will not see you or treat you like a person. To me, you are a fine girl, and you must make it your business to grow up to be a very fine lady because you are my daughter. But to them, you are not a young lady. To them, you are not a person. To them, you are a thing. And though through you, they may access and acquire and abscond with all manner of things. The things I made, I worked my whole life to make. I made it, I built it, all for you, this fortress of things. If you let them in, everything I built will be forsaken. Do not let them in. 
People cannot be trusted. They are fragile, weak. People break, and they'll even break their own promises. Now, if a thing breaks, a porcelain vase, a shiny automobile, or just a simple window, you can fix it, or you can replace it. And even if you can't, you can still hold the broken pieces in your hand, but not people, and not promises, and not, if I should risk, sentimentality for a moment, one's own heart. So don't trust anyone. Don't let them in. Don't let hearts and vows and dreams be broken in the first place. It's simply not a prudent investment. To them, you are a mere thing. Remember that, young lady. Beat them at their own game. Things, not people. If you remember nothing of me, remember this. With sincere regards, your father. Things I want for my birthday. One, a cake as tall as I am with strawberry jam filling and candles. Two, a table filled with presents all tied with ribbons and bows. Three, a doll even taller than I am so I always have someone to help me practice the waltz. Four, a doll that sings so I can finally learn how to harmonize. <laughs> Five, lots of lovely, unusual things to add to my music collection, like instruments and records from lovely and unusual places. Six, lots of shelves to put them on. Seven, a doll that looks like a very pretty girl. Eight, a doll that looks like me. Nine, magic feet and a golden voice so I can dance and sing my way across the whole wide world and see the footprints where I have stood. 10, more furry four-legged friends. 11, a two-legged friend. 12, a birthday song. 13, Someone I can show this list to. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen.
happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Doris. Happy birthday to you. Following a drive through streets lined with luxurious houses, stately metal gates, and ornate mailboxes, I arrive at Shangri-La for the very first time. I'm greeted by a myriad of vibrant colors that invite me in to listen to the voices of each tile, column, and staircase. The foreign archways wrapped in unfamiliar design the gilded panels covered in impeccable detail. A thousand geometric shapes sophisticatedly carved into ancient stone and precious wood. Wherever I look, I uncover meaning, significance, story. But when I peered over that wall, I wasn't prepared for the story that I would receive. When I looked over that wall, the laughter stopped. Children with skin as brown as mine, looked up at me from below. The little boy that was about to leap from his rock, the group of teenagers splashing in the water, and the girl giggling with her friend, all saw me looking down on them from above. They froze, and so did I. I've been below that same wall many times. I've played in those waters, jumped from those very rocks, and wondered the same thoughts that likely crossed the minds of those children who were looking up at me as though they had done something wrong. What's on top of the wall? Who lives up there? This wall was made to keep me out. This wall was made to make sure I stayed below. On top of that wall is a place meant for someone else, not me. I wanted to hide. I wanted to let them know that I was them. I wanted to turn away so that my embarrassment would end, but the moment lingered. The little girl, the one who had been giggling with her friend, locked eyes with me and wouldn't let go. Her look was almost defiant, daring me to tell her that she could not be there, challenging me to use the privilege that she thought I had to remove her from the rock that she was sitting on. If I could have spoken to that little girl, if I could have said just one thing, I would have told her that the rock she sat upon, the rock beneath that wall, was a throne, a seat as high as any wall that will ever be raised, and that no one could ever tell her otherwise. 